I had this saying, um, I was talking about Bitcoin a few years ago, that you can see the future in the present if you have a keen enough eye. And the example I think of with that is the telegraph, you know, in the 19th century had this idea that you can communicate with anyone on earth very rapidly. And if you really thought about that, you're living in the 19th century, you could kind of think of the the implications and what might be possible in the future, like being able to have all of the world's information available to everyone all the time certainly is an implication of that. Although it would be very hard to have thought of that in the 19th century to dream that that far ahead. You know, someone like Jules Verne may be an example of a person who could imagine that in, in the future. But I think we have the same thing with AI now. Like we can think about, okay, these things are going to become much, much more cheap. Uh, we can produce things much more cheaply. What are the implications of that? What, how is that going to change society? And it's uh, certainly something that I think is worth devoting a lot of thought to. A lot of dollars will be made or a lot of Bitcoin will be made on, uh, you know, making great investments and, and creating great projects that will build out this future. If you can just think of what the implications are that AI will have on, on our future world and, and our economy. There's a really good point you you made too. Um, was uh, the value of this? If there's an AGI, like or a ecosystem of AGI, of uh, autonomous agents that have specific goals and they can create their own keys and receive funds in order to capitalize and get resources. You know, they they trade their resources for others. Um, they need a money and they literally can't use anything other than Bitcoin. You know, that's the mm -hmm. only thing, uh, the only money that, that a computer can actually operate with uh, or a, a artificial intelligence with a set of goals can actually operate with and generate keys on their own is, is Bitcoin. It, it must be a digital money, which means that if there is a massive productivity gain, that comes from an ecosystem of machines that can communicate, set goals, and trade. It must only accrue to Bitcoin, like almost, <laughs> almost entirely. Yeah. Um, it, it won't be able to be soaked up by the fiat environment. Um, so that's a that's a really really fascinating way to think about it. Right, and the pr the price level of any money is really just the amount of economic activity that's being saved in that money. And if you're an AI that can only save in Bitcoin, suddenly you have all of this productivity going uh, into savings in Bitcoin. That's when you get uh, Michael Saylor's phrase being relevant up only, Laura, <laughs> uh, because it, that value, it's it just so multiplicative when you have something that can generate value that quickly uh, and and uh, without any other intervention from a human, uh, it, it's really that it gets you close to the concept of a singularity, where you just have gigantic amounts of value being created very very quickly. Uh, so this this is aside from you know the the negative uh, aspects of the global economy and the debt problem that we have, there is a there is a positive path that you could get to. Uh, hyper Bitcoinization and AI is a potential way of doing that. So yeah. very interesting, there's, great, great topic to think about. There's one other element in the idea of paying off the debt through productivity in, in that regard too, is that from a fiat perspective, the debt, it, it's such a deflation, you know, going back to Jeff Booth's uh, uh, model, thesis. so to speak yeah. of, you, you know, your thesis, thank you of uh the fact that this is a massively deflationary force is that an astonishing amount of new productivity with ai tools actually is actually makes the debt you know orders of magnitude more difficult to pay off without the inflation um unless you are accruing it in bitcoin purchasing power so it's it would literally mean that the the benefit of being able to pay off the debt would be in the fact that we are earning Bitcoin that is increasing in value. And then it's just like, what's a million dollars in debt when Bitcoin purchasing power is $10 million, you know, like, like it has to, it has to have a currency that can accrue that value in comparison to a dollar into the, in, in comparison to what our debt is denominated in. 
Um, so it's it would essentially be almost a there, there's like this this push and pull of these two incredible forces of a staggering amount of productivity that we need to figure out how to uh, the currency to reflect, but then this astonishing amount of dollar denominated debt that actually gets harder to pay off if the currency gets more valuable, if the dollar gets more valuable. Um, so that that push and pull will probably either lead to a inflation through the movement of that capital out of the dollar economy into the Bitcoin economy or through the the having to inflate the money simply to be able to pay it off because it's also a downward pressure on wages in nominal value uh, and a massive push upward in wages in real value. Um, but our, our debt is nominal. So it, it only matters if, you know, it doesn't matter if your $1 a month in wages buys you a beautiful house and you're super rich. If you still have $100,000 nominally denominated in dollars, you've got a problem. Um, uh, but, you know, again, it's, it just goes to show how much is going to change and how much these things interplay with each other. Um, and I really just think, Again, it's exit is exit. Just like watch the dollar from afar and see see how things go because it, it could be we want something that accrues that value that that allows us to share that value and a sound money is the only thing that lets that happen. <laughs>